Jesus Christ said he would be in the grave three days and three nights. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Bible is perfectly accurate. We must study all the scriptures to understand how Jesus could die at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, April 3rd, and gloriously rise from the dead on Sunday morning, April 5th, and this be three days and three nights in the grave. The Bible tells us there is a double Sabbath during the three days and three nights that Jesus is in the grave. It is important to understand this to fully appreciate the accuracy of all scriptures. Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights. A Jewish day begins at twilight or sunset the night before, approximately 6 p.m. The first day was Nisan 14, which is Passover. The second day was the special double Sabbath, beginning with the Feast of the Unleavened Bread on Nisan 15. The third day was the Feast of the First Fruits, the first day of the week, Nisan 16. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The first month in the Jewish year is Nisan. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Festival of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. For seven days present a food offering to the Lord, and on the seventh day hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. This makes Nisan 15 a double Sabbath, the regular Sabbath, plus also the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was also a Sabbath. While Jesus was in the tomb, there was one more festival after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is the Feast of First Fruits, described in Leviticus 23, 9-11. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I'm going to give you and reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. The double Sabbath was on Nisan 15. The day after the Sabbath would be Nisan 16, the first day of the week, Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday and also the Feast of First Fruits. Rabbi Eliezer ben Azara, about 90 to 155 AD, was president of the Sanhedrin after Gamaliel II, grandson of the Gamaliel that taught Paul, and is considered one of the great rabbis whose views are recorded in the Mishnah. In the Jerusalem Talmud, in the Sabbath Tractate, Chapter 9, Part 3J, it says this, It has been taught, Rabbi Eliezer ben Azara says, a day and a night constitute a span, ona, and part of a span, ona, is equivalent to the whole of it. The rabbinical law clearly teaches that part of a day or night is equivalent to a full day and night. Now let's look at the first night and day that Jesus was in the tomb, Nisan 14, the day of the Passover. Nisan 14 begins on the Thursday evening at twilight and continues through the Friday until twilight Friday. Nisan 14 began at twilight on Thursday. The very first thing that happened in the evening on that Thursday was that Jesus celebrated the Lord's Supper 
with his disciples. We know this from Matthew 26, 17 to 21. On the first day, meaning Passover week, of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Notice as Nisan 14 was approaching, April 3, 33 AD, how Jesus says the appointed time is near. This is to fulfill the 62 and the 7 sevens of Daniel precisely to the day. The prophecy of the 69 sevens is given to us in Daniel 9 verse 25. Know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets in a trench, but in times of trouble. The prophecy giving the crucifixion date of Jesus shows you just how much God should be glorified. 7 plus 62 equals 69 sevens. 69 times 7 equals 483 years. 483 years times 360 days per year is 173,880 days. March 5th, 444 BC, the decree of Artaxerxes to April 3rd, 33 AD, the crucifixion date of Jesus Christ is 173,880 days. To God be the glory. After the Passover meal, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. There he was arrested and taken before the Jewish leaders. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under the oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. When morning came on Nisan 14, Jesus was crucified. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Jesus dies on Nisan 14 before the Sabbath begins at twilight, the special double Sabbath. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lamak sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Jesus was buried on Nisan 14, still before the Sabbath began at twilight that evening. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. 
This completes the first night and the first day that Jesus was in the tomb, according to the Jewish methods of a partial day and night being a full day and night. Now we move to the second night and day in the tomb, Nisan 15, the double Sabbath, beginning with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We know it was a double Sabbath from both Luke and John. It was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. This phrase, in obedience to the commandment, means the fourth commandment, the regular Sabbath. The Apostle John tells us it was a special Sabbath. There is no contradiction here between John and Luke because there were two Sabbaths that day. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. This again is strong biblical evidence that Jesus was crucified in 33 AD because only in 33 AD was Nisan 15 a double Sabbath. In 30 AD, Nisan 15 started Wednesday evening at twilight and ran until Thursday evening at twilight. So the special Sabbath would have been on Thursday and the regular Sabbath on Saturday. In 31 AD, Nisan 15 was on a Tuesday, which would have started on Monday evening at twilight with the regular Sabbath on Saturday. In 32 AD, Nisan 15, the special Sabbath, was on Tuesday meaning it started at twilight on Monday with the regular Fourth Commandment Sabbath being on Saturday. Only 33 AD fits all of the Bible passages and also fits the 69 sevens of Daniel and also the Jerusalem earthquake of 33 AD. On Nisan 15, the second night and the second day in the tomb, Jesus rested on the Sabbath. But our God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus was speaking to the Sadducees when he said, But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living for to him all are alive. We now move to the next day, Nisan 16, the first day of the week, the feast of first fruits, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which gives hope for all who believe in him that they too shall be resurrected. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Nisan 16, the Feast of First Fruits, the first day of the week. Resurrection Sunday completes the third night and the third day in the tomb, according to the Jewish method of a partial day and night equals a full day and night. The Apostle Paul calls Jesus Christ our Passover lamb. Paul also calls Jesus Christ the first fruits of the resurrected because the first day of the week was the feast of first fruits on Resurrection Sunday. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. But God has even more perfect timing. Next we have the perfect timing of the Feast of Pentecost. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an ephah of the finest flour, baked with yeast, as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Exactly 50 days later, just as the Bible predicted, Pentecost appeared to the apostles on Sunday, May 24th. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is directly from the Father. Muslims believe and are taught the Spirit of Truth is the false prophet Muhammad. This is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit that Jesus said would not be forgiven. You can trust the many resurrection truths of Jesus Christ. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Jesus fulfilled more than 351 Old Testament prophecies. The prophet Daniel gives the crucifixion date more than 600 years before it happened. This is given in Daniel chapter 9, verses 25 and 26. March 5th, 444 B.C. to April 3rd, 33 A.D. is 173,880 days, just as Daniel said. NASA confirms a lunar eclipse over Jerusalem on April 3rd, 33 AD at 6 p.m. But that is not the end of the story. Jesus did not remain in the grave. Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, April 5th, 33 AD. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. 
Isaiah tells us, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Jesus is truth. Find the truth while you still have time.